I'm Paul Bennett here in Millbridge, Maine. We're located right along Maine's Bowl Coast, not very far from the U.S.-Canadian border. This week was an abbreviated work week because we've had a lot of inclement weather. It's that time of year now. I'm not out there today because it's pouring rain. The storm isn't as bad as the nor'easter we had a few days ago where we had a few wind gusts recorded at 70 knots. Today the wind gusts are right around 30 knots, give or take a few. The ground is still saturated from last week. I did make some progress. I did get the Kielsen laminated, installed, the, the two longitudinal stiffeners which will uh, support the twin keels, those are installed. Started shaping the stem. Take a look at my Patreon page, maybe you want to sign up. A little as a dollar a month that helps support me what I'm doing and I very much appreciate that. Thanks for watching. This keel is being laminated together in two layers. I'm just using the Type Bond 3 waterproof glue. Today, the, by good fortune, the temperature is actually warm enough for this glue to set up. Since the first layer I got down yesterday, the goop that I used before, that Dorella adhesive, has had a chance to set up and it seems to be holding pretty well. And in order to make sure I have a good glue bond, I'm applying glue to both surfaces before I put them together. And then I'll use a combination of clamps and screws to hold it tight until the glue sets up. And this glue does start setting up fairly quick, so you don't want to take too much time when you're doing these laminations. As soon as you get it on there, you want to get it together. Because as soon as this glue is exposed to the air, it starts to thicken and start setting up on you. Make sure I have a good tight connection here. And this little bit standing proud I'll just take off with the belt sander. It's initially in position. I don't need to film this. I'm just going to put a bunch of screws in all the way up. And then I can continue this 
I'll take another section, glue it on further down and work my way to the stern. I only have one more shot piece to go to complete this lamination of the keelson. This piece right here. So I'm going to take measurements right off the work itself. So I'll just line up a straight edge. I don't even have to use a bevel if I just line up the straight edge along the transom. And I can draw a line. That gives me an angle here on the side and all I have to do is transfer that angle back to where the notch is right here. And once I do that, I can go ahead and cut that. It doesn't have to be perfect, just uh, rough. I can go ahead and see where that needs to be. Just want to get a line drawn on there as a guide. And I just tilt my saw along that line. This is the approximate angle. I drew it right there. I'm just going to move that over. I'm going to duplicate that angle right here with my bevel gauge. And you can't see what I'm doing, but maybe if I turn this around. I'm just duplicating that, that angle with the bevel gauge. I'm bringing it back to the line where I want to cut with the saw, which is right here. And just put it right there. And then I'll tilt the saw to that angle as I cut it. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to do it by eye. I'll use my, my jigsaw right outside here. I don't have to be spot on, I just want to be close. I'm just going to use these lines I drew as a guide. If I can hold it at that angle, I'm good to go. Now what I could have done is I could have loosened up the base of this saw and I could angle it and set it at the proper angle, but honestly I didn't want to take the time. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It was actually right on the line. It was about as close as I'm gonna, I need it to be. It's just quick and dirty and it works. I left a little bit of material proud on this and that's fine. It's better to have a little bit too much and have to trim it down than it is to cut it too short. I'm just going to sneak up on it. I'm going to make a little mark here. This one I only have to cut straight across. No bevel. The bevel is going to work fine by the way. You just check that. That works out just fine. So now it's just a matter of cutting the end off square. Once I do that, it should fit just fine. Now I get that marked. That should work. I'll we'll just go and cut it. Well, I was filming and the thing cut out on me. I'm not sure why. You can see that this now fits. There's a slight curvature. And that's why you see some gaps. And that's fine. And when I clamp it down, it'll all, it'll all mate. I do have material proud here, but that was by design. I didn't want to have it sunk down too low. I'm going to use a power planer to shape it down towards the, the transom here and finish it up with the belt sander. And so that'll be fine. This is going to squeeze down more once I clamp it and uh, glue it and screw it. So that's really it for the, for the Kielsen lamination. So the Kielsen, as soon as this is glued and screwed, this last section, that part is complete. This 2x4, you can see this row of notches. There's one on each side. This longitudinal support goes on the inside of the hull. What it does is it helps support the keel bolts because this has twin keels and the keel on each side, the keel bolts will be going right through the bottom plywood panel and right through this longitudinal support which is tied in at every mainframe and there'll be additional gusseting once the boat is turned over. It helps to equally spread the load across the hull of the boat. This allows the boat to, you can come into the shallows and beach the boat on a flat surface, a sandy bottom, let the tide go out, and when you're high and dry the boat will sit bolt upright and you can get under there and scrape down the hull and clean it and throw on a little more bottom paint if you have to without having to haul the boat out. There's not that much of a bend so I don't have to laminate it like I did the Kielsen. This 2x4 will bend right into place with some clamps. I'm using a different adhesive. I'll show you a close up of that in a second. I used up my Gorilla Glue uh, construction adhesive. This particular adhesive is a Loctite product. It's called PL Marine Fast Cure Adhesive Sealant. This can be used down to 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. I bought this at the big orange box store so you don't have to go out of your way to find it. Let me show you a close up of this tube. Then I'm going to squirt a little in every notch. And then I'm going to go ahead and bend this 2x4 into place. And I'll go ahead and screw it down to all the mainframes. This is it.
uh, this is that Loctite fast cure adhesive sealant that I just mentioned. It, you can use it below the water line. It is approved for that. It's a pretty good alternative to the very expensive 3M and uh, Sikaflex products. So it might be worth a shot. I'm going to use it. I'll let you know how it works out. You can see this is all screwed into place, glued and screwed. It's good to go. This also, between the Kielsen and these longitudinal stringers, they give me something to sight against as far as the bevel goes. When I go across the bottom of the frames, get the proper bevels cut on those. These are very shallow bevels. There's not much to them, so I'll probably just hit it with the belt sander real quick, and it won't take but a few seconds. As you can see here, I just have a scrap piece, uh, a batten that I'm using to uh, do a test fit because I'm getting ready to fit the chine log into place. That's what this will be, the chine log. I've got it clamped in position, going back a few frames. I just want to see how well it takes to bend. The bend is fairly radical, a little bit more than I would normally use on a design. I think I can bend this cold without having to steam it, and that's the goal. I'm just checking where I want to have it. Where I make the mark here, I'm going to take out a little piece of wood right here in the stem. I'm going to notch it, and this will fit right into the notch. This stem here will be flush with that piece going on the inside of it. It should be the same, same surface. It'd be flush with each other. Before I do that, I'm going to have to trim down this stem a little bit. This stem has to be a little bit narrower. There's a little bit sharper angle coming in here in order to take that bend. Because this is the bottom, and the bottom is narrower than the, uh, the top of the, the stem there. I'm just going to have to shape this first. But this is just a test. just want to see how it's going to do. So far, I think it should take the bend. It's just making it and I haven't had any cracks in this test piece. Before I get to uh, actually fitting it, I still have to ease the bevels. On the bottom here of the notch, it has to, where there's a, a downward slope, I have to bevel it down. And then where it comes around the hull, I have to bevel the edges, ease them. That way there it'll take the bends a little bit easier. Right now I'm bending it without having done that, and it's taken the bend which tells me that once I ease these notches, that should bend even easier and less chance of uh, cracking my, uh, my stringers. So this is the chine. There's one down here. This will be the shear clamp. And then I have one in the middle right here, and that will help to secure the plywood. The plywood will be screwed into those uh, three stringers. Drunken sailor, what shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?